Hey everyone! So, I was accepted into the Sheridan Animation Program back in March 2020, and I already wrapped up my first semester, so this video is kind of late. But after getting some questions about my application, I wanted to share my score sheet, give a quick overview of my portfolio, and then go more in depth in each category about my process, advice, or tips. So, first off, here's my score sheet. The score cutoff in 2020 was 84% for domestic students and 91% for international. I'm in the international category because I'm actually a biology alumni from the United States. See, I graduated in 2017 with a degree in molecular environmental biology, and I was working a full-time job in tech when I decided I wanted to pursue animation. I didn't have easy access to professors, and I wasn't surrounded by art students that could review my work. In fact, after talking to my classmates, I realized my approach to some of the pieces were a little different than the traditionally taught techniques, but I know how hard it can be to make a portfolio in a void, so I hope this video helps anyone thinking about applying now or in the future. And without further ado, here's my portfolio. Starting off with figure drawing, the requirements are two short poses and two long poses. Figure drawing is a skill that takes a lot of practice, so the earlier you start and the more sessions you can do, the better. Because behind every good figure were probably a hundred bad figures. Figure drawing was actually one of the categories I didn't start from scratch for Sheridan. There was a drop-in figure session near my workplace, so I'd go for a late night evening session maybe once or twice a month after work. While it was cheap, there was no proctor or teacher to give feedback, and there wasn't a lot of structure. Just like my gestures don't really have structure. See, these 30 second gestures were me, I guess, experimenting with going straight into contours with a wax china marker. You can see the joints all start to pinch pretty badly. The structure is kind of flimsy. These portfolio pieces probably weren't the best place to be trying out new mediums. So my advice for anyone doing gestures is to capture the core movement of the pose with a quick line of action and focus more on proportions and structure with basic shapes. I still like the gesture on the left because it has a nice line of action, structure problems aside. My longer poses were also a result of me stylizing because I was doing these figure drawings for myself and I was approaching them more like an illustrator than an animator. Still, I think there is a pretty nice sense of form and volume because with these longer poses, it's your chance to be more careful with muscles, proportions, and details. While you can get away with really quick circles and squares for gestures, you have to make sure you put an effort into completing the hands, feet, and head on a pose because even if the rest of the pose is beautifully shaded and detailed, if it starts to taper out, it shows you're not confident in those portions of the body or you don't have good time management for long poses. And now we enter the crunch zone. I made the decision to apply to Sheridan kinda late. I was busy with a lot of office work and other commitments around that time. So unfortunately, I did my animation, storyboard, and hand drawings the week of the deadline, and the character and layout the day of the deadline. Please, I'm begging you, please learn from my mistakes. For better or worse, I'm used to cram culture and drawing quickly, so I was able to make the deadline, 
but this took a huge toll on my physical and mental health. So with that out of the way, the hand drawing. For our ear, it was preparing and grabbing a door handle, and I believe it's always some form of anticipation and executing an action. It's kind of a test of your anatomical accuracy, but also how well you can visually communicate anticipation and action, which is something that's core to all animation. I took a photo of my own hands, and while you should exaggerate the pose, don't skew and distort your hands so much that it doesn't communicate what it's supposed to be doing. And when it comes to actually drawing it, I broke down the hand into simple slabs with a light blue pencil, then built the final form on top with a darker pencil. I have Proko's videos on YouTube to thank for the accurate hand breakdown. Check them out because he explains it better than I ever could, and they were basically my lifesaver for this category. If I were to try this assignment again, I'd improve my line quality and the straights and curves of my fingers, especially in that anticipation drawing. As it stands, the anticipation pose feels kind of weak, and the proportions get kind of sausagey. My short animation, on the other hand, I actually had a ton of fun with. The assignment was a 24 to 48 image animation in any medium using a juice box design that they provide us. I chose to use Photoshop's timeline feature because even though it's not the most robust animation software, it's what I'm used to drawing in. The trick here is to use the 12 principles of animation, squash and stretch, anticipation, slow and slow out. There's tons of videos and resources about all of these. But it's important that on top of the 12 principles, you make sure you stay on model. Sheridan provides a character sheet for you, and even though the character is usually pretty simple, like for example a juice box, I'd recommend printing it out or having an overlay of the juice box on your digital canvas so you can always have a reference to what the neutral pose should be. That way when you're exaggerating and squashing or stretching, you make sure you don't push it too far and start going off model. I also did my animation in passes, so as you can see here, this is my quote unquote animatic in Photoshop and then my rough pass on top of that, and my final pass on top of that. At least for my animation, the moment the straw sort of detaches and becomes its own object from the juice box, I animated that on a separate layer. But when they're moving together as a unit, I animate them in one layer. So the storyboard assignment is to tell a story in four panels based on a character and a prompt that they provide you. For my ear, the prompt was you can't judge a book by its cover using this possum character. Unlike a conventional storyboard, you only have four panels, so it's really more of a beat board, but that means each of your four panels have to be strong. Don't overcomplicate your story. Keep it simple and focus all your energy on the best way to communicate it clearly. Every shot needs to be contributing to the story in some way. And there's a lot to keep track of. There's composition, character consistency, background, perspectives. What I would suggest is to do a rough pass first where you get the basic story and maybe some placeholder character sketches and expressions and show them to family or friends. You'd be surprised how a story you think is clear in your head gets really lost in translation to an audience. After you get them to tell you what they think the story is, mention the prompt to them because you want to make sure your story is suitable for the prompt too. Another thing to keep in mind is that each panel should have a different kind of camera shot. The Rupert even suggests to use a close-up, a long shot, and a medium shot, and that's three types of shots in only four panels, so yeah. After you do the story and shot pass, then you can go in and focus on drawing the character on model. Seriously, don't underestimate how hard and how important it is to draw someone else's character on model. It's something you have to do in the animation industry, and which is why they're testing you here. The pass where I draw the character is also the pass where I work on the perspective and background. That way I can make sure their character is placed in perspective correctly. Storyboarding is a whopping 25% of the portfolio of my ear. I heard they might have lowered the weight in 2021 cycle, but it's still a pretty big chunk. And I imagine the reason it's so heavily weighted is because it gauges your ability to communicate a consistent story and frame it through cinematography. These are the skills that separate the cartoon and animated movie form animation you learn at Sheridan versus other storytelling mediums like comics, illustration, or motion graphics. My character rotation I think is okay. Keep in mind that it doesn't have to be a super amazing or unique design. You should definitely think about stuff like having a strong silhouette, employing shape theory, and thinking about your character in 3D even if it's a more stylized character. The more details you add, the harder it is to do the rotation. 
Making the rotation consistent was incredibly time consuming. I was constantly drawing these straight lines across the page to make sure all the little details lined up at the tip of the horns, the nose, the eyes, basically every little detail. You can check the accuracy of your rotation by flipping through your drawings if you're doing them traditionally or exporting and clicking through them digitally like what I'm doing here. And finally, the last predetermined category, perspective line drawings. The instructions were to do two line drawings with at least one character in each. One is a linear perspective of something like a cityscape or a building, and the other is an aerial view of a natural landscape. I found out later that the typical approach was to make a grid and then build it up like a set, but I saw in the instructions that we needed a character, so I just set up the scene more like an illustration. I think my focus on storytelling was actually what saved me here, especially because I started layout last and had three hours till the deadline. With the interior, I made the focal point the vanishing point, slapped on some guidelines, and went straight into line art. It's pretty much just one point perspective making a flat view look dynamic, and while I'm not getting any architecture awards, I guess I still demonstrated that I could draw in perspective and that I could do so in service of story. Same thing with the aerial shot. I established a horizon, a rough grid surface, and went straight into line art. I have no idea how this managed to slide because if you look at this drawing at full size, it's rough. But I guess zoomed out, you can still get a sense of the environment. I used the canyon and rivers to establish the shape of the terrain and again focused on story composition. Most of the examples you'll find online have much better 3D structure and much cleaner line art. I'd say, given more time, I definitely would have done a cleaner structural pass before I did the line art. And finally, personal art. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for putting up with my rambling. I am not used to using my real voice in these videos. But either way, personal art, like figure drawing, was one of the categories I was lucky I didn't have to do extra work for for this application. I started by making a PDF of my favorite sketchbook pages from 2019. My favorite pages by far are the ones where I see something I want to study. For example, I see a cow while driving on the freeway. I do a detailed anatomical study, then I look at different varieties from life like different poses, in this case different breeds of cattle, and then turn that into a story and character. I did the same thing here with the mantis, so anatomy study, looking at real life varieties, and then turning that into design and story. I also had a lot of just quick people watching sketches. If you can't go outside to draw in cafes, you can still study video stills from sports or movies. I had a personal interest in storyboarding specifically, even before going into Sheridan, so I was able to submit this ambitious animatic I made as a passion project during my last semester at Berkeley. The full animatic is about 5 minutes long and I've uploaded it on this channel. I'll also link it in the description. I also submitted a shorter storyboard sequence, also made for practice back in 2017. I finished off with some drawings I did for the Mermaid social media trend and then art of an original character story. The takeaway here is that there's no right way to build the personal section. My only advice is to have a variety of work and maybe put more storytelling works than say fine art pieces. But otherwise, this is your chance to show off what kind of art and vision you do for yourself, not for a rubric or for a class. Just draw what you like. Make the Sheridan admissions office and look at your OCs. This is the category where your submissions aren't supposed to look like any other students. Anyway, that's about all I had to say. Some parting tips. 1. Read Sheridan's rubric and instructions very carefully. Remember that the prompts change a little bit each year, so the current requirements aren't going to be the same as the one I have in this video. And 2. There's usually a Discord server or a Facebook group for hopefuls every single year. It's not college sponsored, but it's community run and it's a great place to meet other applicants and get feedback. I wish I had known about the Discord group when I was applying, that way I could have gotten more feedback. Remember that I'm not an admissions officer, so there are some things I can't answer, but if you have simple questions, you can leave it down in the comments and I'll try my best to get to them. Otherwise, you can find me on social media all under the same username here. And I also put links in the description. And I'll probably be posting any future animations or demo reels on this channel. For anybody applying now or thinking of applying in the future, good luck, don't give up if you don't make it in the first time, and always seek out feedback and keep improving. Alright, bye everyone!